Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for that opportunity, a chance to be in his house. We thank God for allowing us to come through this day that we have never seen before. We thank him for how he watched over us, cared for us, and thank God for you tonight joining in with us. We welcome you to our Thursday night Bible study here at Praise Temple. We're located at 822 East Loop Road, Anchorage, Alaska. Welcome, and we hope that uh, through the study of the word, you'll get your Bibles, your notepad, and join in with us and go through the word as we, uh, the Lord's Spirit, op open up his word to us. We pray tonight that he will give us wisdom according to his word, that he'll give us the knowledge that we need to exp expand on his word. And we pray that he'll touch our hearts, that we'll be able to receive the word uh, with gladness. So the night before we go into the word tonight, again, we welcome you, those that are joining us online. We ask that you, at this time, if you can, why don't you share uh, this broadcast with somebody you know so somebody else can hear the word of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you now for this day you've given us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for how you watched over us and kept us safe. Lord, you didn't have suffer nor hurt harm or danger to come upon us, but you allowed us to see another day wherein we never seen before. Thank you for how you watched over us last night and, and touched us this morning with your finger of love. Thank you for watching over our families, our home. Thank you for watching over your people all over the world, all over this country. And the night as we go in your eternal word, Lord Jesus, we ask that you just uh, give us the right division according to your will. Let it not be our own thoughts, our own ideas, but let us be uh, according to your word. And let us to be able to rightly divide your word that it, whoever may hear it tonight may be able to receive it and run for their lives. Bless us now. Bless your servant. Bless the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we are thankful for the Lord bringing us back into this house. We're thankful for what he has done, is doing. And I pray that the Lord is uh, uh, looking over you continuously and that you will, in return, give God the praise that is due him. And so tonight, we're going to go right into our lesson tonight. We're winding up our, our series on out of control. And we hope that these three lessons that we have gone through, uh, or will be going through, uh, have been a blessing to you and then some enlightenment to what is going on in the world that we live in. Tonight, our scripture text tonight is found in Matthew chapter 1, chapter 24, rather, verses 1 through 51, Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 through 51. That's going to be our steady text. We're not going through the whole uh, uh, book of this 24th chapter, but uh, we're going to skip through some verses. But for your, for your benefit, I encourage you to go back into this chapter and read it for yourself, study it for yourself, and let the Lord speak to your heart. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse number 1 through 51. And our noted text tonight is found in verse 38 and 39. Notice text is verse 38, 39. Verse 38 reads, For in the days, and I'm reading for the New, New International Version, For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Verse 39, and they knew not or knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. They didn't know nothing until it happened and the flood came and took them all away. Many people talk about the, when Noah built the ark that he preached for 120 years telling people to come into the ark. It's going to rain. That is not what the Bible says. The day the Lord declared to Noah that he was going to build the ark, the, the Lord declared to him that only him and his family 
would be saved. Everybody else had already made their decision. They had waited too long. And, and so we, we've gone into much uh, division in our nation in the past several years. And uh, our nation is uh, very much divided from all spectrum of the scene. Our nation, uh, even the world, uh, there is a lot of division going on. And I often wonder, uh, wondered where we were headed and uh, are we going to have a racial war or something? And you know, in the last 15, 20 years, it, it was looking as though this country would be divided on a racial scale where uh, there were whites against blacks. And, and, and for a time, I myself believed that. And, uh, and, but as things went on, and the killing of George Floyd and other people that had been killed by policemen, uh, we saw a different type of division in the country. It wasn't just blacks against white. It was, it was people against the establishment. It, 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 was, it was the rich and the poor. It was, everybody had a mixture in what was going on in this country. And then on January 6th, uh, we had the insurrection of the Capitol, which, which took us to a different level, another level of uh, things that were going on. And I thought that was the breaking point uh, of what was going on in this nation. And then on the last week or a week before last, a few days back when the Supreme Court decided that they would overturn Roe versus Wade. Uh, and that decision brought a different type of division in the country. So then the words spoke to me concerning what was going on. Uh, it, it wasn't just a black and white thing. It wasn't just a rich and a poor thing. It, it wasn't none of these things that we thought or are thinking that is going on, that is causing what is happening in the world to take place. Uh, this thing started thousands of years ago when Jesus walked this earth. It started uh, that division. Jesus came, I, came and said, I, I came that I would put mothers against daughters, fathers against sons. And when it comes down to what is right and what is wrong, it, it, it will create division because some folks want to be right, some folks want to be uh, right on this side, some folks want to be right on that side, and in return, none of them are right. Uh, they just are caught up in the last days. And we talked on Sunday about the last days, but they are caught up on the last days. Yeah. And, and tonight I want to look at our text again, uh, just I know the text for it. In the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking. Yeah. They were marrying and giving in marriage up to the day, the day that Noah entered the ark. They knew nothing about what was happening, verse 39, until the flood came and took them away. Now that is how it's going to be at the coming of the Son of Man. So tonight I want to use a topic, the ignorance of, uh, the ignorance of, of ignoring impending danger, the ignorance of ignoring pending danger, something that is coming that is a danger to you, but you are ignoring it because for what a reason, you may just be ignorant to the fact. You may be blind. The Bible said if the word be, uh, if the word be hid, it is hid to those that are lost. And now in our society, we've came to the point with technology that we can predict a hurricane is coming. Sometimes we can even predict that there's chances of tornadoes and other things that, uh, that happen, natural disasters that happens in our society. And sometimes when Pete, the, the, the weatherman predict that in three days, Hurricane Linda gonna hit Anchorage. And, and there are some folks that are going to take away and go someplace else. They're going to go to Fairbanks. They're going to go uh, Juneau or someplace else to avoid the direct hit of that hurricane. And there are going to be some of those that despite what is 
broadcast, despite what has been proven a fact that these things can be dangerous, they, they're going to say to themselves, I'm going to just sit here and ride it out. And in the world today, despite all the preaching of the gospel, despite all the churches that have been built, despite all of the evangelism and TV ministry and radio ministry, and on, and online ministry, despite all these things, there are folks still in the world that says, I don't believe God is coming back. I don't believe we're heading to the end of the world. I'm just going to ride it out. Despite all of the evil that is being forecast and being orchestrated in our world and in our society, there are still folks that says, I'm just going to Ride it out. The ignorance of ignoring, uh, uh, ignoring impending danger. When you see it coming, when you hear it, it is coming, you should, you should do something to help yourself to be safe. And so it is bad enough to know that danger is coming, but, to, but it is even worse when you don't know that danger is coming. And this is what this lesson tonight is talking about. People are just like it were in the day of Noah. He, he told them before even God, God started to talk about the boat, he told him him, them that the uh, rain was coming but they laughed at him and they they made fun of him that he didn't know what he was talking about and they, the Bible said they continue to do whatever they were doing until the flood came and took them away uh, I don't want any of you tonight that are listening to me to, to take that type of attitude that you just gonna ride it out until something happens. Because when something happens, it's going to be too late. Yeah. The day the Lord cracks the sky, it's going to be too late. Yeah. The day the angel steps out on the cloud and says, time shall be no more, it's going to be too late. The day God takes his breath, his spirit away from you and say you're not going to live another mo moment it's going to be too late the day you're riding down the road and all of a sudden you go head on with some vehicle it wasn't your intention to leave the earth that day or this day but uh, because of circumstances or of something that other people did uh, your life was taken it, it wasn't your intention to go to that grocery store and somebody come in there and start shooting people it wasn't your intention to go to that an event and all of a sudden somebody pulls out a gun or whatever and starts shooting people. It wasn't your intention to come to church and somebody steps in and begin to shoot people. Those are not our intention but they happen every day and people are still not putting their mind on the times that we're living in. And so we're, we're in our worst times that we're living in and, and, and people are not so much Please no so much paying attention to what is going on uh, right now. They're thinking of, that is 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 conservative. It's liberals. It's Democrat. It's Republican. It's this. It's progressive. They're thinking all these things have something to do with what is going on. But I came to bust your bubble tonight. It has nothing to do with who's in the White House. It has nothing to do with who's on the Supreme Court. It has nothing to do with the legislator or the senator. It all has all to do with the word of God and what has been predicted that will come in the last days. I wish somebody hear me tonight. So let's go to our lesson, Matthew 24 and 1. Jesus, lifted, Jesus left the temple and was talking, uh, walking away when his disciples came unto him to call his attention to to its building. And sometimes, you know, when we visit a very beautiful edifice, especially as a huge church or a mega church, and, and everything is so spectacular, and, and, and we walk out and say, oh, this is a beautiful place. And the disciples come out and, and, and drawing his attention to the temple that sits there. And, and Jesus says in verse number two, do you see all these things? Do you see? And he asks, truly I tell you that not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. In other words, what you see now is going to all go away. No matter how beautiful it is, no matter how successful it is, it's all going away. There's coming a time when somebody's going to come in and tear this kingdom down. And verse number three said, and Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives and, and the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, 
When will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the ages? Uh, inquiring mind just would like to know. I don't know about you tonight. I, I would at least want to have an idea uh, when Jesus is coming. I know this even this specific chapter says, no man know the day or not the hour, but uh, he has given us some indication uh, some, so that we should repent a close attention to it. Things were prophesied that you should pay close attention to the things that are happening in our world, in our life. And, and, and so it leads us to life point number one. Have a private talk with Jesus. The disciples could have asked him publicly, but they waited until they got him privately. And they asked him, tell us, we're close to you. And, and the Bible said it's given to you to know the mystery of God. It's given to us, we should, this, this, this thing shouldn't take us as a thief in the night. I wish somebody hear me. There shouldn't be no saints of God that be surprised when the Lord comes back. There shouldn't be no saints of God that be surprised and death comes and knock on your door. There should be no saints that is surprised when things just don't go the way you had it planned because it's given us to know the mystery of what is happening in this world. So James 1 and 5 says, if any man or any one of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. He's not going to find fault with you. He, if you ask him, he's going to give wisdom to you because he wants you to be successful. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be, go back with him when he comes. So he's not going to fault you. If he was going to fault you, he would have fault you from the beginning. The Bible said the Lord while we were yet sinners, the Lord died for us. So if he was going to find fault, he would have found it at the beginning when he decided to die. But no, he wanted to save us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who Whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life. And then verse number six says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Don't ask God and say, well, I don't know whether he's going to do it for me. You cannot doubt when you ask God. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And you're not going to get anything from the Lord. Something you don't understand, just ask Jesus. If there are things Things going on in your life that you don't understand, ask the Lord and the Lord will reveal it to you. Somehow he's going to reveal it to you. Let's go on in our lesson. Verse number four, Jesus answered, watch out. Uh, that no man deceives you. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is going to make note that uh, don't let nobody deceive you because the people are going to come and they're going to give their own opinion, their own interpretation, but don't you let anyone deceive you. And the Lord putting this out front. He wants us to be knowledgeable. He wants us to be wise. He wants us to study his word. So when people come and say this or that or this is happening or the Lord is coming back on July 12th, you, you know that is not correct because you already studied the scripture and know that no man know the hour that the Son of Man is going to come back. So you, you shouldn't be deceived uh, by anyone coming and trying to say they got a word from the Lord. And many have done it in the past, in my lifetime. I, I can't even count on both of my hands all of the preachers and the, 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 the prophets and the others that have come and, and say the Lord is going to do this on such a day. The Lord going to come back on such a day and all of them were liars because if you prophesy and it don't come to the past, you're a lying prophet. And then verse number 5 said, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. That's number 2. They will, will deceive many because people are out there looking for a word. We, we, we talk often about birds and we talk about hunger. I was just talking about somebody on yesterday about how people People uh, in foreign countries, third world country, they hunger for the word of God. They hunger to know God. They hunger to have a fellowship, a relationship with God. Where we that are in the U.S., in America, we have an appetite for God. We will do something some of the time, but we'll never do all the things all the time. We'll want God some of the time, but we'll never want God all the time. We, are y'all listening to me? But the, the 
the Bible said, don't let nobody come and deceive you. They're going to tell you that they are the Messiah. And there will be thousands of folks that are receiving that and that are following. There's a guy been in Miami that said he was the, the, the modern day Christ. Got a mega church. People following him every day. But guess what? He, he is a false prophet. According to the word of God, he's going to deceive many. Verse number six says, uh, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, so this is the third thing that he, he, he puts before us. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. Just keep now the ignorance of ignoring, ignoring uh, impending danger. You know it's coming. You feel that it's coming. You've heard that it's coming, but yet you're still ignoring that the Lord is coming back. But I'm warning you tonight, those that are listening to us, I'm warning you, all of us, that we better get ourselves together. We better to get our lives in order because the, the, the direction that this world is going in, it can't be long before the Lord comes back. Everything that has been prophesied is now beginning to put, yeah. put, be in place. The things that we used to look at and say, when it will it happen, it's already happening. So he said, you hear of wars and rumors of wars. Putin says, I'm going to go into uh, uh, the, the, the country next door. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to the war going to be over in a week or two. Now they're going into the fifth month and the war still is not over. And now you're hearing that he want to invade other countries that surround Russia. And so there is this rumor of war. And we heard Biden say today that they're putting more troops over in the Far East. They're, they're manning a base in Turkey, I think it is, or Poland. They're, they're manning a base in there. So those are rumors of war. As fast as one is something else is starting back up. He said, but when you see it, uh, when you see to it, uh, but see to it, rather, that you are not alarmed. These are things that are happening, but don't be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Are y'all listening to me? Look at somebody and say, are we there yet? We're, we're not there yet, but there are some things that are coming down the pipe. You better get yourself ready. You better get yourself closer to God because it's going to take a relationship with God for you to know, first of all, that, that you don't be ignorant to the fact that the Lord is coming back, that you don't be ignorant to the fact that this world is going in a direction and nobody has an answer how to fix it. Don't you be ignorant. Don't you be caught up in this politician game they're saying that if you vote for me I'm going to take you in the right way or you vote for this one they're going to take you in the way you better vote for Christ you better say Jesus is my Lord you better say Jesus is my Savior you better say Jesus is my King because nobody else can get us out of the mess that we are in and he goes on to say don't be alarmed the end is not yet so verse number 7 is the fourth thing he says nations shall rise up against nations and kingdom against kingdom. Remember our series this time. Uh, you, don't, you, you gotta remember what we're talking about. The series uh, of our lesson. Uh, uh, out of control. So nations are against nation and kingdoms are against kingdom. Uh, the fourth thing that he mentioned to us. Then he goes on in verse number seven and says there will be famine and earthquake in various places. That's the fifth thing that he mentioned. Just on a few days ago there was a uh, an earthquake in Afghanistan. Thousands of people got killed. Uh, when we look at the things, all of the things we went through with COVID, these are pestilence. These are things that come and you don't have a cure for it. And it go through the country, go through the world, and we still don't know how to handle it. And, and now that we're almost out of it, there are shortages. There are shortages for automobile. We were just talking, coming to church tonight, as we look at the various automobile uh, dealers up there in Merrill Field and they got their cars spread out because they don't have enough vehicles to fill the lot because there's a shortage on a little ship, one little ship 
chip that they need for the automobile in order to successfully increase the production line. And then we were over at one of the sister house yesterday looking at her yards and her flowers and we were talking about the bees and we came back to the house and we planted some flowers and we were talking about the bees, how important the bees are because they pollinate the crops and they pollinate things. Just a few years ago they were concerned about bees because bees were dying out and disappearing and if the bees disappear and that's going to create a problem with the growth of crops and, and fruit and vegetables uh, and uh, in other words it will lead us into a famine are y'all listening to me today so there are although some things you say well we can prevent there are some things that God will send that no matter what you do you won't be able to prevent it or stop it uh, the ignorance of ignoring uh, impending danger verse number seven verse number seven uh, verse number eight says all these things are the beginning of birth pains I, I know King James of uh, uh, Bible says they are the beginning of trouble uh, but if you listen at this text it is talking about how a woman is in travail and so they it just a baby just don't come and you don't have pain but there are indications now uh, y'all listen to me that there are there are there, there there are things that come and contraction that hits you and you say, oh, that. and it just hits you for a moment and it's gone away. It may not hit you again for hours or sometimes for days, but when it starts hitting you hour after hour, you know the end is about to come. You know that baby is about to deliver. And when you start getting 20 and 30 minutes apart, you better start going toward the hospital. And when you start getting 10 minutes apart, you better get Get ready. I never forget when Avery was born, she was in a room and they were waiting for the baby, the, the, the construction contraction to get at a certain distance apart. And then she had a few hard ones, and the nurse run, runs in and she looks at her, see, we got to get you to the delivery room right now. What was happening? Avery was coming at that moment. There was no orderly there. I wound up pushing her into the delivery room so they could prep her for the, the baby to come. And so uh, the Bible says in verse 8, which is the sixth thing that he mentioned, these are the beginning of birth pain or the beginning of trouble. Somebody say we're at the beginning. So it leads us to life point number two. Where are we headed? And this is what I talked about in my introduction. I was a little concerned about where we were heading in the country, in the world, and I had all these thoughts about maybe it's going into a racial war and there's going to be blacks against white and all this other stuff, but no, 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 no. It's going to be sin against righteousness. Everything that is being set up is going to be sin against righteousness and you're you're hearing they put all these laws in place and and they've given them people all these rights and they've made people uh to, to, to be recognized as something that they are not all these things happen for a reason look at somebody and say, oh, it's happening for a reason uh, you know, the presidents are trying to put certain people into the Supreme Court so they can change certain things and it's on both sides of the spectrum I'm not talking about Democrats I'm not talking about Republicans I'm talking about all of them every president that gets into the White House look for a judge that can rule something in their favor what kind of law I'm so glad that the word of God is of no private interpretation aren't you glad what, what would be the, how would the kingdom of God be where people look for pastors that will preach what they want to preach. Y'all listening to me. When a vacancy come in a church, they, they, they recruit a pastor that going to preach only what they want him to preach and then they're going to leave out all the rest. Look for a pastor that's not going to take the whole word of God, but going to pick out pieces that apply to what we like and, and what we want and then use that. What would God's kingdom look like if we selected leaders uh, that would only uh, do what we want them to do. 
We would be miserable in the kingdom of God. But I'm so glad that the word of God is of no and private interpretation. You can read it. You can look through it. You can look up words. You can research in the encyclopedia. But unless God reveal it to you, you'll still be blind to the word of God. And unless you be born again, you can't even see the word of God. He said, yes, Pastor, I can see it. I just read the 10th chapter of John last night. You read it, but did you understand that? Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, it's a difference between reading and in, in understanding. It's a difference between revelated knowledge and applied knowledge. And so when you get into the word of God, unless God reveals it to you, you you're going to gonna have some problems there. Look at somebody and say, you're going to have some problems. So, so where are we headed? If things aren't getting any better, what should we do? What should we be doing? Uh, you know, some people waiting on the next election. Go ahead and wait. It ain't going to get no better. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we got a, a municipal election coming up pretty soon and a state election. I see billboards all over the city. Vote for me. I'm the one. I can, I can help you. No, it ain't going to happen. Uh, we had somebody promise on the last election, if I get in there, I'm going to solve the homeless problem. But it ain't happening. I'm trying to tell you, folks do not have an answer. The only answer is in the word of God. And if you put your trust in anything else, Thank you, Jesus. And so everything that has happening in the last few years is a setup. We're being set up. Look at somebody say, we're being set up. We got a lot of pastors running after political campaign. You better come preach the word of God and get your people ready for the return of Jesus Christ and stop worrying about these political candidates. Go ahead and vote for them, but spend your time in the house of God. God didn't call you to be a political campaigner. Oh, Jesus, help me. He called you to be a witness. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be what? My witness. Not, not, not the Republican witness, not the Democrat witness, the independent. You shall be my witness. And the only thing that's going to change this world is that we change people's lives. And if we don't change people's lives, we are headed down a downhill on a freight train. And it's not going to get any better. I don't care who you vote in. Come on, Jesus, help me tonight. First number nine says, then you will be handed over. And this is where we're at right now. We've gone through a lot of this preliminary, preliminary, uh, the preliminary things, uh, the things that leads up to something else. Uh, and we are at verse number nine right now. They will hand you over to be persecuted and put to death. Uh, we're getting to that point now where if you say certain things and you use it personally, you can go to jail. Uh, Y'all listen to me. That's why you got to lean on the word of God. They cannot do it to you if you lean on the word of God. And But you, there is coming a time, even when you preach the word of God, you shall go to jail, uh, which we are preparing ourselves for this. Uh, there, there are uh, organizations putting lawyers together to help churches out of situations that they might get in because of the laws that have been passed and will be passed. I, I say again, you better lean on God. Uh, if you have to go to prison, go to prison. The, the apostles went to prison. People in the Bible went to prison. Why did they go to prison? They went to prison because they stood up for the word of God. Read the 11th chapter of Hebrews, how they were put in prison. They were sawed asunder. They were put in barrels of oil and boiled. They were pulled asunder with the horses. They went through all these things, but they did not deny God. Uh, yeah, listen to me. They did not denounce the God that they served. I'm so glad that the Lord got somebody that's going to stand up for the word of God. We're going to preach it. If we have to preach it behind bars, we still got to preach it because this is what we are called to do, to stand up for the word of God. Somebody give God a praise in this house. Verse number 10 says, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other. You got so many people right now that's turning away from the faith. 
They're believing in everything else. They were so glad the pandemic came. And some of them will never, ever return back to church. <laughs> they will never, ever turn back from church. I've, I've seen people that were so in the church, and now they're believing in all kind of things. Jesus. Turning from the faith. People that were brought up in the church, turning away now, I don't believe in this thing anymore. We got people that, were, that grew up in this church say, I don't believe in God anymore. I mean, this, this is turning away from the faith. What you've been taught, what you had believed in, you were turning away from it, saying, no, I, I got enough of this Jesus thing. I got enough of this church thing. I'm not going back to no church. I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to be like the people in Noah days. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing until something happens. I just come to tell you, something will happen. Thank you, Jesus. And verse number 11 says, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. And I, in the last 20 years, there have been more prophets coming up in the world than I've ever seen in my whole life. I'm prophet this and I'm prophet that. Who called you to be a prophet? I, last time I read it, the Lord shall place in the church some. The Lord will place it. Not you to wake up one morning and say, I'm a prophet. What we're being set up for is deceivers. Yes. And deceivers will come and build up people's faith and trust in them. And then they're going to start deceiving them. Jesus. Somebody say false prophet. Because it, it, it's, it's only so long you can guess people's problems. After a while, people are going to stop having back aches and leg aches. And you're going to have to get to some real problems. Help me, Jesus. People are going to stop having financial problems. How many people you know got financial problems? <laughs> you can go out there, Oscar, and say, you, you, you're having some financial problems. Come on, get some. Get some. If you want to be a prophet, you want to prophesy, seek God. And, and give the church something that they really need. Yes. If you got a financial problem, it means you're not managing your finance right. Mm. Ain't going to be no miracle drop out of the sky. <laughs> and he ain't going to take the wealth from the wicked and give it to you. He said, be good steward. Yes. And I had to learn that the hard way. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> you got to be a good steward. And you, you can't spin out what you don't have coming in. Thank you, Jesus. But many false prophets will appear. How will they come? They will just appear. Yesterday, they were brother, sister, so and so. Today, they are. Be careful. Be careful. Verse number 12. Because of the crease of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. The one of the things that is killing the church folks right now is because things are getting so evil and they don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> Their love is growing cold. The love for what? The love for God. Their love for God. Because people don't respect God like they used to. They don't seek after God like they used to. They don't believe in God like they used to. They don't trust God like you. All this is a result of their love going cold. If you really love something, you're going to give all you got to go after it. But if you don't care nothing for it, you just like it, you just associate it with it, you're going to do it whenever you want to, you're going to come whenever you want to, you're going to be a part of it whenever you want to, and if any one thing come up, you say, no, I don't need it, I got to do something else. The love of many shall grow cold. Verse number 12. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. King James says, he that endureth to the end the same shall be saved. The one that stands to the firm, not just stand, but stand firm to the end, 
the same shall be saved. Leads us to our final life point. Life point number three says, stand firm and don't you give in. Come on, God. Stand firm and don't you give in. There is enough of word of God for you to defend yourself. There are our own opinion, but there is God's opinion. And when you give God's opinion, that is your, if you got any right in the U.S., you got a right to the freedom of religion. Now, y'all listening to me. If you got any right in the U.S., you got a right to the freedom of religion. And you can take this book and you can defend anything that you believe. That's according to the word of God. Are y'all listening to me? So don't go out there talking about what you think. Talk about what God thinks. And if you see something and you know it's wrong, if you see a dog out there with a cat suit on, <laughs> you don't have to say that dog, hey, man, you need to take that cat suit off. You just go to the word of God and tell the dog how to dress. You a dog. Look like a dog. Are y'all listening to me? I, 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 got, I proved something the other night and, and uh, Sister McCray knew I always talk about it and she, she's one that she's, she loves monkeys. I guess that's why she married me. Huh? <laughs> but, but she loves monkeys. And she said, I would just love me a little monkey. I'd dress it up. I said, but when you, still, when you dress it up and you give it a bottle, it's still a monkey. Ain't nothing changed about that monkey other than you put something on it that shouldn't be on it. Y'all are you listening to me. So we were looking at uh, the, um, what that monkey show we looked at the other night? The, the, the planet of the apes. And we were looking at the planets of the apes. And they had they, had took, they took this little monkey, they were supposed to kill them all, but they took one of them, and they took it home, and they had given some kind of chemical that they had developed that caused them to be smarter than they could ever be. But the reality of it, when that monkey got upset, <laughs> that monkey turned back to be a monkey. They had clothes on it, and in one place they were in this wilderness, in those woods, and a dog started barking at this monkey. And somebody said, is that a chimpanzee? And they had this shirt on it, and he kept looking back at the dog, and, and after a while he made, and that dog, why? Because he's a monkey. So you can look like how you want to look. You can dress like how you want to look. But the fact of it is, you're still a monkey. <laughs> so, so you, you interpret that. Look at somebody and say, you, you interpret the word of God, interpret that. You, you will still look like a monkey. Let's finish this thing up. So, so where are we headed? Everything that's happening in the last few years, we're being set up. Uh, we'll be handed over for persecution. Many preachers in the last few years have been persecuted for what they stand on. And it's happening all over the country right now. Verse number 10. And at the time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray each other. Verse number uh, 11. F -f False prophets shall appear and deceive many people. Uh, number 12. Because of the crease of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one that stands firm to the end shall be saved. saved. So stand firm. And let's, let's finish it up. Uh, the end is inevitable. It's going to happen. No matter what you think, it's going to happen. And what I'm glad about, like I said before, the Bible is not a no private interpretation. And what the Bible has said, it will come to pass. The verse number 14, our final verse says this. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. King James says, as a witness against all nations. 
uh, and then shall the end come. And I've heard preachers and evangelism, uh, evangelists talk about they, they've been spreading the gospel all over the world. It's not just spreading in the gospel. It has, has to be a gospel that is preached against them. Because you can, you can give people that Kool-Aid gospel and they'll still not know that they're not right with God. But the gospel come to put you on a, uh, give notes to you that you are not right. Anybody ever been not right and the gospel came and changed your life? That is what the gospel is supposed to do. So when we preach the gospel, it's supposed to convict the hearers. When they hear the gospel, they, they need to know that I am not right. You can't be like the folks in the old days. They, they heard the gospel, but they never turned to God. They heard no preaching, but they never turned to God. And so when God made the decision to build that boat and to send that flood, God made that decision. He cut off their chances of ever receiving salvation in the day of Noah. So it's going to be with the day of the coming of the Son of Man. There's coming a time where we ain't going to preach anymore. There won't be no more altar call. There won't be no more invitation. The time have, would have ran out on so many people that did not believe this gospel. But I came to tell you that we're living in a time. We're living in a critical time. And, and we're out of control. And the world is out of control. But saints of God, you stand firm and don't don't you give in. There are going to come times when they're going to tell us we must believe in this and we must believe in that. No, you got to stand firm and don't give in. There's going to come a time when they're going to come against the very belief of your faith. But you got to stand firm and don't give in. Uh, no, there's the Bible says there's greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I know they're putting their army together. I know Satan is getting all his devices in place. I I know that the demons that are going to manifest themselves in the end times, they're all getting in place. But I come to you to tell you tonight, you stand firm and don't give up. Don't you be ignorant uh, to the impending danger because it's coming. The time of God's return is coming. The end of the world is coming. Whether it be you do you dying or whether when the Lord return with a shout in the midair, the end of time is coming. And so don't you be ignorant. Don't don't you let these folk pull you out of your faith. Don't you let these folk pull you out of church. Don't you let folks pull you away from not believing in God. But you trust in God until the end. You stand firm upon the rock and that rock is Jesus until he return. I'm going to believe in him. I'm going to trust in him. And I encourage you tonight to do the same. Trust in God until he return. Wait on God until he return. Believe on God until something happened. Pray until God changed your situation. I believe that we're on the right track. I know that we believe in the right thing. I know that the word of God is good. That the word of God is right. That the word of God is pure. That the word of God is wise. I know that the word of God is what we need in the last and evil days. If our country going to be anything, it's got to change by the word of God. If this world going to turn around. It's got to have to change by the word of God until God stop the preaching of the gospel. Until God bring in and usher in the end times. You still have an opportunity to be saved. It's not too late. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what you're trusting in. But it's not too late. You might have been in witchcraft. You might have been in sorcery. You might have been in drugs. You might have been an alcoholic. But it doesn't matter what you've been in and while the gospel is being preached you still got an opportunity to come to God you still have an opportunity to seek him before it's too late I'm so glad that I sought the Lord and he heard me I'm so glad uh, that I know Jesus uh, in the pardon of my sin I'm so glad that I got a savior if I run to him uh, he'll come to my rescue if I call on him he'll answer me if I seek 
seek him. He allow me to find him. If I knock, he's going to open the door. I'm so glad that I got a God. If I get in trouble, he'll come to my rescue. I'm so glad I have a God that no matter what the devil brings my way, God's going to bring me through it. If I have to go through the furnace, it's not going to affect me because God's going to bring me out of it. If I have to go in the jail, God's going to bring me out of it. It doesn't matter if I have to go in the ocean. God's going to prepare a well to bring me out. Thank you, Jesus. God's going to work it out, saints. Don't let what's happening in the world cause you to lose faith. Don't let what's happening in life cause you to lose faith. You trust in God. You stand firm. You give, don't give in. You wait until God makes a way. And I'm a witness that he will. He will make a way. He will make a way out of control. Tonight, don't be ignorant. Ignorant of don't let the ignorancy keep you from knowing what God is doing. The ignorance of the impending danger. There's a danger coming. But you're in the right place. You're with the right person. You are with God. And God's going to work it out. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May he keep you is our prayers. Don't be ignorant of, of the impending danger. Don't you let ignorancy keep you from knowing what is coming. Because it's not going to be an excuse. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord said that they are without, without excuse. So may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in. May the Lord bless you. It's our prayers. And may he keep you. And may he forever watch over you. I pray that the Lord watch over your household, over your family. That the Lord bless you far beyond what you can ask or think. I pray with you tonight that the Lord will keep his presence in your life. I pray for you tonight. I pray with you tonight that the Lord will overshadow your home, overshadow your family, and whatever is going on, I just challenge you tonight to just put it in God's hand. Let God work it out. If you got special prayer tonight, call our prayer line at 907-258-9682. Somebody will pray for you, pray with you, and the Lord will answer prayers. May God bless you and keep you. Uh, those of you that are online, we thank you again for joining in. May the Lord bless you is our prayers and as always continue to join in when you have an opportunity in our broadcast and if you got questions in our broadcast, shoot us a note in our message board and we'll try our best to get an answer to you. May God keep you. We'll see you next time. Every Thursday night is our Bible study. On Tuesday nights at 7 we're on Zoom with Christian Education and every Sunday morning we are here live in this temple uh, here at 822 East Loop Road, Anchorage, Alaska. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Praise Temple, thank you again for coming tonight. May the Lord bless you real good. It's our prayers, and may the Lord keep you. Uh, those of you that desire to give, uh, this is an opportunity for you to give at this time. Again, I thank you so much for coming, and uh, your presence.